Good morning, good afternoon, or good night, and welcome to Command Power, the show in which we discuss all things Magic the Gathering with a focus on Commander. And today we have another episode in our Spoiler Spotlight series in which I talk about, well, spoilers and tell you what my thoughts are on them. But before that, just a quick reminder to click subscribe if you enjoy my videos. We're well on our way to a million subscribers and your support means everything to me. And today we're going to be talking about the Wedding of River Song. For two colors and one white, it's a sorcery that says, draw two cards, then you may exile a non-land card from your hand with a number of time counters on it equal to its mana value. Then target opponent does the same. Cards exiled this way that don't have suspend gain suspend. And time travel, which means for each suspended card you own and each permanent you control with a time counter on it, you may add or remove a time counter. So again, a super interesting kind of political effect or group hug kind of effect that has benefits and downsides and should be quite strong in the right deck. So to start off, usually cards like this, which give you an opponent an exactly symmetrical effect, are not great because they're actually getting card advantage, whereas you're not. They're getting plus two card advantage for nothing and you're basically getting plus one. And if that was all that this card did, then it wouldn't really be that good. However, that's not all this card does. It also allows you and that opponent to exile a card from your hand with time counters on it equal to its mana value. Now, I've probably not mentioned this that often on this channel, but I really love Suspend. I love time counters and it's one of my favorite mechanics because I've always been a huge fan of Joyra and she was, you know, the poster girl for that kind of mechanic back in the day. So seeing all this support for time counters really makes me happy. And I think that's what's going to make this card less symmetrical than it might initially seem. If you're including this in your deck, it's because your deck has a time counter sub-theme to it. That means that getting to time travel and getting to exile something with time counters on it is going to be a net positive for you. Your opponent might not be able to do the same. Usually with suspend cards in the past, they're usually suspended with three or four time counters on them. So if that were the case, your opponent could exile something with a very expensive mana cost and have it come out in three or four turns, thus kind of cheating on the mana cost. However, since this says that there's going to be time counters put on it equal to its mana value, that makes it a little bit less appealing for your typical opponent because if they have something worth six mana, then it's probably not in their interest to wait six full turns to cast it for free. At that point, you might as well just pay the mana. It is going to benefit them if they have something fairly cheap that they can cast in a turn or two for free because that can make their next turn a lot more explosive. And seeing as it's a sorcery speed for you, they're going to probably have their turn before you have your next turn, which means that they're going to get to remove the counter first. But that's where the synergy with the deck comes in. As we've mentioned, you are probably building around this mechanic. That means that you're interested in that and that means that you're probably going to want to exile something with high mana value since you can manipulate the counters on it much easier. The fact that it comes with a time travel attached is also also really good. There's a lot of cards that interact well with time counters in this set, so we should be able to manipulate them quite easily. And there's even some cards from back in the day, such as Joyra's Time Bug, which work with time counters as well. So all in all, it's another super interactive card that's going to make for interesting decisions and gameplay for you and an opponent. Again, it's going to go straight into Kanaios and Tiro and probably some other decks as well. I think it's a fantastic interactive design and I'm really looking forward to playing with this in my Commander games very soon. So there you have it. Those have been my thoughts on this new spoiler. What do you think about this card? Please let me know in the comment section below. I read all comments and respond to all of them too. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to click like or subscribe. It really helps the channel. And until next time, take care. Woo!